who is titled Hem of His Garment. Proverbs chapter 4, verses 20 to 22, KJV. My son, attend to my words, incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes, keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. <laughs> adversity uh, with health is different from adversity with anything else. Um, because <clears throat> health is directly connected with life. And as humans, it is only natural. It's, it's a natural instinct to fear death. And anything that even makes us think that we could be approaching death either slowly or quickly can can be mind-boggling. And for, us to, for most of my life, um, I've been like a, a hypochondriac uh, and, you know, just worried about death and being sick. Um, and after coming to know the Lord, my prayer has been that he take all fear from me. <clears throat> even the fear of death um, or being sick. Um, because I no longer wanted to be crippled by just the thought of being sick. And and it didn't take me long to realize that worrying about my health was an avenue used by Satan to keep me bound. And and as soon as I even thought that something was wrong with me, I would panic. <laughs> I went into panic mode and, and um, I, I began to act on feelings. And, and um, I would quickly drop my faith. And, and of course, um, this is unacceptable. So my prayer... Um, became that 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 the Lord will purge this from me, and and um, <laughs> I'm here writing this article, <clears throat> Exodus chapter fifteen, uh, chapter fifteen, verse twenty seven, KJV, and said, If thou wilt diligently hearken, hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and wilt do that which is right in His sight, and will give His and, and give ear to His commandments, and keep all His statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee. Which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. And I mentioned um, in another article, faithful is He, um, and and I kind of just mentioned how the Lord uh, will definitely uh, He can't He He can't move without our faith. He won't force <clears throat> His truth on us. He won't force His mighty works uh, His mighty works uh, on us. So we have to have faith. So that he may move. And, um, you know, for those who haven't read or listened to Faithful is He, um, it mentions how after a week in America, I, I was diagnosed with an illness um, that I'm believing um, that's going to leave, you know, uh, sooner than later. <clears throat> and for those who don't know me personally, I'm sure that you know <laughs> that I had a, a moment in the hospital where I had to gather myself um, and I had to decide if. I would allow my emotions to get the best of me or if, if I would hold on to the fact that I serve a mighty God who says that he knows the plans he has for me. And no one truly understands what it means to be sick until they're actually sick. And this makes so much sense to me because while doctors are expecting a full and speedy recovery, my current circumstances require for me to do more than just imagine. This is, this is, this is more than just um, considering a scenario. And my situation um, requires for me to deal realistically, <clears throat> to help me underst to understand, um, and, and to help me understand what it means to really trust on God. You know, in this area, God uh, has to help bring me through it, um, because you know <laughs> it's so easy to preach it. It's so easy to to talk about it. You know, you're gonna be fine. You know, you're healed by His stripes. Um, but when you're faced with that adversity. <clears throat> You know, we really are called called to um, step up and, and, and to believe the truth, um, the truth of God. And, and um, it's so wonderful um, because um, the Lord is bringing me along, you know, when when he, when he knows it's the appropriate time. And, and I had my time when I would stress and, and I would kind of, you know, freak out, you know, just thinking about uh, being sick. And now um, that the doctors have... Um, diagnosed me with something, you know, that's not, you know, truly severe. It's not even worth really getting in detail because, um, you know, it doesn't matter specific adversity, but, um, you know, and, 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 uh, just to see where I've grown with, he brought me from and, and, and I can kind of see some of what, uh, where that he wants to take me. And it's truly amazing to know, um, <clears throat> what he can do.
So <laughs> it's clear that, that I just didn't mature on my own or that I just didn't grow up. It's very clear um, that, that the Holy Spirit, you know, that the Father is truly doing a work and, and stripping away fear and, and, and um, uh, refilling those places with faith and, and courage. Exodus chapter 25, I mean, excuse me, Exodus chapter 23, verse 25, KJV. And ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. And I don't really want to uh, discuss death uh, in this article, because um, I really want to save this topic um, for an article in the future. But I do want to talk about how sickness can be spiritually and naturally inspired. Um, and we and we, we certainly shouldn't give Satan too much credit, you know, always blaming him for everything that goes wrong. Because while Satan does his job to the best of his ability... He still has no authority over that of God's. And if God seems, sees fit, you know, then God will bring it to pass. Um, so, you know, even if Satan does something, um, it's still in the will of God. So, you know, just, you know, keep in mind that uh, God is always in control. John uh, chapter 4, verses 20, 47 um, to 52, KJV. <clears throat> When he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Then said Jesus unto him, Except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. The noble man saith unto him, Sir, come down ere my son die. Jesus saith unto him, Go thy way, thy son liveth. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him, and he went his way. And as he was now going down, his servants met him and told him, saying, Thy son liveth. Then inquired um, he of them the hour when he began to amend, and they said unto him, Yesterday at the seventh hour the fever left him. And um, <clears throat> we often associate unclean spirits um, coming uh, in, into the subjection, um, until the into the authority of of the Father. But I find it amazing. That the flesh has to obey as well, <laughs> you know, because we always think of unclean spirits and Satan into comes into subjection, but the natural world has to come into subjection also. The Lord reigns in heaven and on earth, um, and and natural sickness may require natural remedies, but it definitely definitely still needs the Lord's divine intervention. Uh, and we t we typically look for physicians to figure out problems with our bodies, then we expect the physicians to fix it. But with every type of medication and, and or treatment, you know, when we look to medication and we look for treatment and, and, and we, we figure out that um, it is unable to get things back in order, we feel discouraged. Sometimes we put too much into physicians and treatment and medication. We sometimes put too much in man and, and, and we feel hopeless when the knowledge gain, the knowledge gained by doctors in medical school when that runs dry when the doctor says he does he or she doesn't know we uh, it's you know <laughs> no one wants to hear that i'm sorry but i don't know what to tell you we panic we need to hold tight to the fact that everything must come into subjection um you know unto god and as i shared uh in the in another article um faithful is he after being in the hospital, I talked with the doctor, and they prescribed me medicine for nausea. Um, but since I hadn't experienced any nausea, and I, and I didn't want to waste money, I didn't fill the prescription. And, of course, um, it is the doctor's duty to cover all bases. And, and with nausea being a symptom, he wanted to offer me treatment for it. However, um, I wasn't worried because I, I hadn't had trouble um, with nausea up to that point. And then I went home, and, and I had gone to sleep, but... <laughs> Not for long, and uh, maybe uh, two or three in the morning, I was awakened by the most painful and urgent feeling of nausea that I have ever experienced in my life. And I said to myself, now you can cry and you can become angry, or you can call in the name of Jesus and have faith that he will answer your call. And I decided that I would take you know that as an opportunity to exercise my faith, so I closed my eyes, and I said... <clears throat> Whether this illness be natural or spiritual, I demand you to come into submission to the name of Jesus. I don't know where you came from, but I'm telling you have to leave. I have no power of my own, but I'm demanding you to bow down 
in the name of Jesus because I will have peace. My Savior died so that I may have peace. <laughs> and when I opened my eyes again, <laughs> it was later in that day. It, it was time to uh, go on about my day. So that's just one example of how my natural body had to come into subjection unto the Father. Because once I said that with faith, mind you, I had to say it with faith and believing that the Lord would hear me, whether it be natural or spiritual. They both had to come into subjection. And after praying that prayer, the next time I opened my eyes, it was time to start my day. So I must have fallen asleep. After praying that prayer, I must have fallen asleep. Luke chapter 13, uh, verses 11 to 13, KJV. And behold... There was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loose from thine infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. Now, <laughs> this passage um, gives a clear indication that the woman had an affair, an infirmity that was spiritually inspired. And um, the passage does not specify which type of infirmity necessarily, um, but knowing that there is a such thing as a spirit of infirmity is enough for me to know that's something we should pray against. Um, and, and when we think of deliverance, you know, we often think of, of deliverance from sexual morality, um, drugs, idolatry, etc. But apparently Christ can deliver us from illnesses as well. And, and certainly every illness isn't spiritually driven. You know, well, everything has, has you know, a, a spiritual undertone. Um, but I do believe that some things can happen in the natural. You know, there is a such thing, um, you know, as being sick. Um, but um, this is uh, a base that should be covered. You know, we should definitely just pray against anything, you know, all space of infirmity, you know, all space of sickness and disease, all space of ailment, you know. Uh, we, we Those are things that we should be praying against because we will be surprised by the things that don't have to be. John chapter 9, verses 1 through 3, uh, KJV. And said Jesus, and as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from, from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned, nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. When someone becomes sick, um, we often question what they did wrong and you know how can we make it better and um, all those different things. But being ill um, is, is typically viewed as, as punishment. Um, and, and, and because and we 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 view sickness as, as being something that only falls upon the wicked and unrighteous. You know, you have that. Well, what did you get? What did you do to get it? You know, what did you do? How did this sickness fall upon you? However, this passage above in John illustrates that sometimes what we view as being in, unfortunate can fall upon someone just so that God can manifest His mighty works in the situation. We become so consumed with trying to blame someone or, or throwing a pity party for ourselves that we miss when God could very well be using us to show others in ourselves, you know, just just how much of a loving, powerful and righteous God he is. We will always need to have a healthy perspective. So we must pray to God, always pray to God and ask for his perspective because God has a healthy perspective. If you ask me my opinion on this, on, a, on a few things. You'd be better off asking a dog or something, you know. Um, we need to ask God for his perspective. He has the true and healthy perspective. If we've done something, he'll tell us. If we need to just be still and that he's God, he'll tell us. If he's using us to do his mighty work, he'll tell us. Sometimes our perspective, I mean, unless God has told us our perspective um, is incorrect if it's not inspired by the Holy, by the Holy Ghost. We're only flesh. We know nothing. Psalm 119, uh, verse 71, KJV. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. Sometimes being sick or, um, you know, experiencing an affliction in any way can keep us humble. 
you know, it can keep us desperately seeking the Lord and and uh, and and looking for, to God for all things. And in simple terms, the Lord can put us on our backs just so that we can look up to him. Even if even if again, even if Satan afflicts, um, you know, a saint, it is still while the Lord's will be done. Psalm chapter 30, verse 2, KJV. O Lord, thy God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. And it isn't a secret um, that in everything we do, we must have faith. And health issues will try our faith. Especially if we become desperate for wholeness and we, we begin to believe that God has lost his efficiency. It can be a battle if you if you truly want to believe the report of God, but the report of the doctor appears to be more promising, but the, the report of the doctor sides with the report of Satan. You begin to question if God is still efficient when the doctor is telling you one thing and your flesh is telling you that same thing, and then Satan is giving your mind to believe for the same thing, and you're saying, hello, God, are you still there? God, I'm still healed by your stripes, right? Health will test your faith. Living in a natural world, um, we, we tend to, to look for natural and instant gratifying answers, especially when it comes to self. When we're dealing in the natural and we're dealing with self, we're looking for instant gratification. Um, and, and God has given us doctors on earth, but he is the top physician. He is our healer. Setting up an appointment with a doctor, getting blood work done, and, and having annual examinations, they may seem like exercising every possible avenue known in the medical world but when we get down at the feet of our father and we cry out to him from the bottom of his throne that's when things begin to change anything that's available in the medical world you can try look into it but until you get down to the throne of our father that's when things begin to change not the way that we necessarily suspect them to change, expect them to change. But that's what they begin to change, according to his perfect will. And, I, and I'm not taking any, anything away from the skill of doctors because I actually admire it. But we must never forget that doctors only know what they know because of what God shared. God told us what we know. And, and we never we must never lose sight of the fact that man will forever have limits. We have limits. Walking, walking in shattered faith can set us up for doom from the very beginning. Mark chapter 6, um, verses 5 through 6, KJV. And he could there do no mighty work, save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. And he went around the villages teaching. Christ wanted to perform miracles, you know, in this passage of Mark. He wanted to perform miracles and heal the sick, both physically and spiritually. But he could only do so much because of those who did not believe. We would be surprised to know how many blessings haven't been released simply because we didn't believe. Because God could be ready to give to us. But when we reject the power thereof, we could remain without. And as a result, we get mad. <laughs> we, we become angry and we become frustrated at God. It says specifically in Mark that he laid his hands on a few and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. He could, he could there do no mighty work. I'm sure we've all fallen victim. Of, of not having the proper faith in God. Matthew chapter 15 verse 20, 28 uh, KJV. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Having faith in God and doing his mighty work is enough to even have someone else healed. The unyielding faith of this woman was sufficient enough that Jesus healed her daughter within the same hour. And as the body of Christ, we need to make sure that we are playing our part in prayerfully assisting those who are afflicted. Because our faith and our prayers extend way beyond ourselves and our family. As the body of Christ, we should be praying and interceding for others because our faith can help make someone else well. Our faith in God. Our praying to God and 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 and, and uh you know and all things 
it, that <laughs> our faith goes beyond us and our family. As the body of Christ, we need to make sure that we're playing our part. Psalm chapter 41, uh, uh, verse three, chapter 41, verse 3, KJV. The Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of languishing. Thou wilt make all his bed and his sickness. I'm not saying that every affliction or health issue will be quenched by our doing. However, you know, I, I am saying that we must stand strong believing that the promises of God, um, while asking him to, to guide our next move, we must believe. That's the foundation of this all. And, and we cannot run from death or disease um, because it will happen. It's, it's life. Um, one of the one of the one of the only things promised in life is death. And for that very reason, we ought to have the father's perspective on it. But once knowing and accepting all of this, we must be aware and we must be available to pray for ourselves and to intercede for others in their time of need. Um, even if the person's situation is natural and, and taking place according to the plans of God, we can at the very least pray for peace. Pray for endurance. Pray for faith. I personally don't know how someone can go through disparities without knowing God. I don't know how people do it because I know God and it's still challenging. Health issues can come a, a, a company with financial stress, infidelity in the home, unrighteous, unrighteous coping mechanisms. Life can be challenging for a believer, one with actual power and authority in the name of Jesus. So I, I, it's clear that a sinner doesn't truly have any type of hope. And um, the, the last time I was in the hospital, um, the doctor instructed that I receive an ultrasound. And originally, I was fine, um, you know, watching baseball <laughs> without a worry in the world. Um, but as soon as I saw the sonographer um, coming to get me, I panicked automatically. And during the ultrasound, I was tense, um, as I'm sure anyone would have been able to notice. And as an attempt to relax, um, you know, to, to, as, as an attempt to relax me, the sonographer began to ask me um, what I wanted to be when I grow up. <laughs> And for those who don't know, I'm 20, uh, I'll be 21 in August, and you know, I'm approaching my senior year and undergrad and all those different things. So, my only response was, okay, this may sound cliche, but it's true. I don't know what I want to do. I'm still waiting for God to tell me. And the woman laughed, and, and I said, wait, you know, no, no, you know, really, I, 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 I won't know until he tells me. I'm, I'm waiting for the Lord's leading. I, 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 <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm waiting for God to tell me. And I had no idea what was funny until this woman, she walked away from me, and she grabbed her Bible study book. <laughs> and in summary, my ultrasound took about 20 minutes longer than usual because we were in the room Talking about the goodness of the Lord. God has his people everywhere. <laughs> and um, then as the sonographer uh, began to take me out of the room, I said, will you be honest with me? Does everything look okay? And the woman responded, everything looks fine to me, but the doctor will have to take a look as well. And I'm sure my face... <laughs> Um, let the woman know that I, that I was still very concerned. And um, she looked at me and she said, <clears throat> everything will be fine. But even if things appeared to be bad, you have to trust God. And you have to have faith in God. You have to believe that he will take care of you and that nothing will happen to you that he hasn't allowed. So I leaned back in my hospital bed and I closed my eyes, asking God to help me believe. Asking God to help me believe him. Isaiah chapter 53, uh, verse 4 through 5 KJV. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Let we did esteem him stricken, smitten, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Amen.